is. Viewer discretion is advised. Good morning to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. And yes, what a way to start. As you can see, we've got June, one of the spotted hyenas that is busy chewing on the remains of uh, Columbus Kill from uh, yesterday afternoon. But yes, good morning, everybody. My name is Cedric, and behind the camera with me on Rusty, we've got BK. Welcome back, BK. Yeah. And we are looking forward to this morning's uh, drive. And unfortunately, yeah, at Lalamba, skill has been stolen. So I am looking around the area just to see if we can pick up on uh, that uh, leopardess. I'm hoping that she was maybe following old June, and uh, I can't see anything as of yet. But what a way to start. Look at that tummy on uh, June. She, her tummy is huge. It looks like she has just swallowed two big beach balls. But yes, joining us on the safari this morning on Wendy, we've got uh, Amy and uh, Muscles and Po. And then down uh, up there in uh, Johannesburg, our directors for the morning is uh, Jared and uh, Chulu. And of course, our tech guru is Simba and our tech guru this side is uh, Max. This is live, this is interactive, so if you've got any comments or questions that you want to send through, if you're watching on the Wild Earth website, make sure that you do register, so you can just send that through, or if you are pretty much watching on the YouTube channel, or hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter or X, you can also just then chat to us. Oh, I do apologize, Gwen. Sorry, I did not uh, take a look there, but it uh, looks like Gwen is our second director for the morning, not uh, Chulu. I, oh, I gave, some, I gave Chulu some credit there for the morning. Well, anyway, maybe he's still sleeping. <laughs> he just heard his name. It's like, what? <laughs> Am I supposed to be at work? <laughs> well, you can see this uh, female hyena of June, the floppy left ear. But let's listen to a little bit because it's quite interesting just to hear crunching through those bones with that strong jaw. Well, looks like it doesn't, she doesn't want to chew now. But yes, uh, unfortunately, as I said, Lamba has lost a kill from last uh, from yesterday afternoon. Kathy, yes, June the balloon. I think that is true. I think, well, that's one thing about June. If she if she wants to eat the entire kill, she'll eat, eat the entire kill without stopping. But she's picked up on something. I'm just waiting. I'm sure. It, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's making a noise now. I'm not happy about something, so I'm just, I'm just looking out. Oh, drunk. I'm going to drop the kill off here with me. Look at that power. Just look at that power, how she carries it. Mm. Yeah, it looks a little bit uh, difficult there. There she goes. Yeah, the hyenas in the background. Mm, she's going through a thorn bush. All done. She's taking some sticks with as well. Look at that. Look at the power. Wow. All right. We're going to try and follow there. Let's go. That is amazing, everybody. What a start to the sunrise safari. Now you can imagine carrying that big piece of meat in your mouth. It is, uh, it's amazing. And she's even got that big belly as well, so. All right, she's gonna go, you know where she's gonna go? Twin dams. She's gonna go straight to twin dams and she's gonna go and put it in the water there. I've got a feeling. There she goes.
All right, while we watch uh, June move off with her shopping, let's head over to Amy as she wants to say good morning. Well, what an awesome start for you all. We have arrived here at the Lions and to my surprise, actually, they are still around. Hello and welcome here with us, everyone. My name is Amy and together with me today behind the camera is Mpo. There we go. And we have arrived to quite the sort of, I suppose, eerie scene in a way these three lions are still they're looking full they haven't got humongous bellies anymore the young female is snacking on the face or the skull of the kudu at the moment and the carcass has broken up there's bits of it everywhere look how beautiful that is wow that's incredibly impressive. I know we always say it, but how amazing are those kudu horns? So I'm not sure if the if the the main part of the kill was moved last night already, but um, on the show. But it's clear that if not, then during the night, bits were dragged around. Hyenas also got bits of it. And now they really are on the very tail end of this carcass. And I would, you know, maybe they're just resting because they are tired. So maybe they'll stick around for the day in the area. But because it's cooler, it's very overcast, um, they may end up moving later on today. Anna Marie, you say you're so happy that the lions are here for Tawny Tuesday. Indeed, it is wonderful. It's amazing how we can work in cats to so many days of the week. <laughs> now, for those of you who maybe are tuning in for the first time, this particular pride of lion is called the Talamati Pride. And there's only three of them in the whole pride. There's the older lioness with all the experience and sort of mentoring these two younger, what we call sub-adults, around three years old or so. And there's a male and a female. We don't know if they're brother and sister, but we do think that they might be cousins or something like that. Darcy Miller, yes. It, it, I suppose it may seem amazing in some in some regard that they've kept it safe, but there are three lions, and um, there are many many things out here that are afraid of a lion. If you can think the strength to take down a full full grown kudu bull, um, and this lion is the older one, not this one that you can see, but the older one we showed you earlier. Um, you know, she she would have done almost all of that work on her own, but the younger ones would have helped with being able to um, distract or chase uh, the kudu to the right place for her to take, take it down in the end of the day. She's actually working on the bottom jaw now Poor this um, lioness. I don't know if you're going to be able to capture it, but just because of the angle, there we go. Wow.
But Darcy Miller, it is... Um, they, they've done well. They've eaten everything they can from this carcass. And right now they're just chewing almost like, you know, a d dog enjoys a bone. They really just, it's the flavor, the scent of the, of the flesh that's attracting them to, to this, uh, the, sort of the remains of a little bit to chew on. But they've really gotten 99.9% .9 of what's here to eat. But they haven't been able to hold on to every single bit of it. There are about seven hyenas that are around here at the moment. And they're currently playing <laughs> just ahead of us to the right hand side. And they have been crunching away on little bits and pieces that they've been able to get hold of. It also seems to be a male that's been trying to mate with a female. So they've been very, you know, they're not hiding their presence anymore, these hyenas. Not that they really did from the beginning, but, you know, they would be chased off and then go sort of lie in the grass and disappear for a bit. But now the lions know they're there. I think they've been able to get a piece or two of the carcass, but really what they're waiting for is these lions to decide to move off. Dares exactly. So they are playing around, doing their thing, and um, we are waiting for, like I say, these lions to eventually move off, which I think could very well happen any time now. And uh, then they'll come in and finish off. There's, I can see there's a leg line, well, a piece of a leg line here. There's a, some bones here and there. Someone got a bone just now because we heard some crunching just behind us in the back right. Stephen, it is a tricky one to some degree, um, but when fully grown, the females are a lot larger than the males. Um, and then the second thing is the when it comes to the penis. So females have what we call a pseudo penis, um, and it's all about the, the dominance that they display over males. Um, and and hyenas have quite a very clear matriarchy. So we also refer to matriarchy when it comes to elephants with a matriarch but hyenas are far more hierarchical so you've got a matriarch and then you've got all the females ranking and then the males come in right at the bottom below all the females and what i saw with this one that's mounting the other one is that at the tip of a of a male's uh, penis is triangular whereas a female's is it's an extension basically um of her genitals so it's not it's not a proper penis obviously that's why we call it a pseudo penis and um it's completely sort of long and it ends straight so there's no shape ping at the end it's sort of rounded and 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 that's it so when you see that triangular tip then um you know that it's a male but in isolation if you just see one hyena without seeing another to compare it to it is tricky to tell male and female apart although you can get the general impression sometimes of, whoa that's a big hyena and then that would be a female hyena
Now, during the town hall um, about Wild Earth situation, news that MultiChoice has not agreed to uh, pay Wild Earth for being on DSTV and sharing African stories with the world. A viewer has started a petition to appeal to MultiChoice to change their minds and we of course support this initiative. We want to ask you at home to help spread the word about this petition as well as our donation drive throughout your community. Your support in this will be of great value in making it possible to continue sharing Africa's wildlife with the world. We need 10,000 signatures on the petition and 130,000 US dollars for the donation. You can head over to wildearth.tv slash donate and for the petition we have posted the link on our socials. It's so wonderful to see these hyenas playing everyone well. And we would love the opportunity to continue to share these live stories with you all. And also just to mention to not donate to change.org as those funds uh, Looking for the rest of the lionesses. Alright, so we've got uh, June here and she's come to Twin Dams finally. And she's still <laughs> she's doing so well. It's amazing the power that these hyenas have got. I mean to pick up that big piece of meat and carry it so far. So, it's, um, it's absolutely amazing. Here she comes. Oh she's gonna come past me. Wow, 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 wow. So I think what she's doing, she's taking it straight to uh, her cub, you know, June's cub, well, Fluffy. Um, and I think Fluffy is inside little Gary somewhere. They don't really have a den, it's just like she leaves the little one now all over the show because that youngster is starting to move around with the older ones. But I think she's realized, okay, well, I've got, uh, I've got a present for you and uh, Got a bit of a takeaway. Just called Mr. Delivery. I think a little cub called Mr. Delivery, and it's like, yep, yeah, it's coming. <coughs> wow, I don't know if you can move with this uh, kill. Yeah, she's going now. Sure. Oh. She's just resting a bit. Uh, wow, strong neck, can you imagine picking that kill up like that, mm. power, all right, let's try and get to the side, <coughs> excuse me, I'm try and get to the southern side there before she disappears, I just wonder where she, she take Painted wolf, yes, poor clumber. I agree. Mm, this is where a oh, lot of chillers here as well, because this is where chillers got a den site. Remember, this is where chillers has been having a cubs so or hidden away somewhere in this thick area. I laugh, she comes charging out and steals the kill from this hyena. And you can see this hyena is listening out. 
She's saying something. See, she's taken notice. See how she's lifting and she's not even looking at her kill. She's just looking straight into the bushes. Oh, and she's going to say, no, let me grab this kill and get away. Get out of here. Hmm? Looking back again. pick up this piece of meat and get out of here. All right, let's go around. All right, we're just going to go around quickly and shoot around that side. Uh, Nathan, I think June. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, sorry, I can't look at my my stuff here. Yeah. I think June uh, I, I think June is maybe nine, ten, nine, nine years old. Yeah, she's still going. Let's go around this corner. Let's go around here. So June mostly uh, resides in Little Gauri, this side. Most of the time, yeah, she comes here. Um, dee -dee -dee Let's see what we can do. Nine years old. Thank you so much, Jared. Nine years old. I think that's uh, the age of uh, this hyena. So she's a proper age. I mean, it's, it's, it can get to like 13, 14 years old. Yeah, and there she goes. Tough way to move your food around. I really take my hat off for June. I think we're just going to stay here. She's going to come up onto the other side. Might just follow because the den site that she was keeping uh, her cub um, is not too far from here. And maybe her cub is still around there. We'll just take a look. So we will follow her while she drags that to kill. There she goes uphill now. And, yep. Now that's like the the tough part, you know, when you run, when you do marathons, it's always those up uphills right at the end that uh, really burns. And she's going up that hill. <laughs> wow. I think after this she is going to be pooped. Yeah, uh, Gail, there are machines. All right, let's go. Uh. Oh, they're fantastic. They're predators. I mean, uh, you just see there now the power and, uh, oh, no, they're formidable animals. So, top, top scavengers. You know, they are one of those ones where they're very persistent. A lot of patience, very persistent. 
All right, let's go to Amy. Well, everyone, we wanted you to come over to check this out. These hyenas have approached here right close to where these lions are, and they haven't actually spotted them as far as I can tell. And I just wonder that once they do, there we go, they may want to chase them off. Like I said, there's very little carcass left at all, but it's just so nice to have these hyenas so close to us as well. You never know how the lions are going to react. Oh, they're lifting their heads now. They're getting a lot braver. Zahinas are making an imp sound. Okay, so it's confirmed these Zahinas are a different clan, not the Juma clan. It does make sense. We went right on the boundary with our uh, with the northern property north of us called Buffles Hook, so it might be a different clan of Zahinas. This little one here on our right has quite chewed up ears even though it's quite small it's howling a little bit there we go that's so cool Oh, there's one coming very close there now, Paul. Yo. I wonder if they're going to make an attempt to grab something. bravest animals in the bush. This hyena is really, it's coming out there now. There's, you can see the face just on the right. I'm going to try and see if that male turns or if the female runs after them. We can get a full picture for you all of what's happening. It's very exciting. Oh, oh, oh the lioness is up. Look, 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 there she goes. Yes. <laughs> I saw that coming. They just were getting closer and closer and closer. And immediately that lioness is now scent marking. Well, sort of weeing and then scratching her feet through it all about showing um, sort of territory over this area over their kill it's an instinctual thing but they haven't run off far these ahinas are still pretty much exactly where they were
that hyena there. It's actually got quite a bit of red on her. Oh, she turned her face, but she's got a nick out her nose and there's a lot of blood behind the ear. Now they've decided to move off. Clearly not being allowed to come any closer just yet. But these are the types of mornings that just make me so, oh, just make me love the bush so much more. It's the excitement, it's the unexpected, it's the anticipation of what's going to happen. I love our hyenas, I love their interactions and their dynamics and how they are here around this carcass and how brave they are. Charmed Chaos, you say hunger really does turn on the bravery circuits. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And it's almost just the, the hyenas being just naturally who they are in that way. They're curious creatures. Um, they're also very strong and powerful animals in their own right, which is why they can, you know, be here. Even though a lion can definitely kill a hyena without a doubt, in in numbers, hyenas are very powerful and, and can, you know, chase things off kills. But they're also clever. And why risk the injury? So they'll test the waters, they'll come closer, they'll see what's happening. And then they know the right time when the opportunity presents itself. But speaking of hyenas, why don't you head over to June and her kill. Okay. All right, everybody. So we have followed June, and she has brought a uh, kill all the way here towards uh, the den site, and the den is here on the southern side of uh, Juma. As you can see, June's cub is very happy now. It's got some food. Well done on mom. She did a lot of work. So she's done some fantastic work this morning. Well done. And a little... Sorry about that. And the vehicle just stopped next to us because we are on a service road here. So it's a little bit of a busy road. What a good mom, eh? I think June has done so well with this little one. It's growing, the little one is growing more and more so. I think it's now, oh, how old is this youngster? I think this young one should be about a year, close to a year. Well, I have to try and figure out how old is this young one now. 10, 11 months to a year. Well, fluffy. Oh, and this little one used to be fluffy. Still got a lot of uh, fur, fur on it. But uh, when it, uh, when this cub was uh, a, f a few months old, it looked like a, f like a fur ball that was walking around. It was so cute. Well, it looks like it's a hyena full morning. It's a, uh, hyenas are amazing. It's, I mean, you just saw how this whole thing played out this morning with uh, June, just first of all, taking, stealing the kill from uh, Tlalamba. And then June had her fair share. You can see her belly is huge. And now she dragged it all that way to the den site here for her cub to us uh, have a decent meal for the, for the day. It's a nice meal as well. There's so much meat still on this impala carcass. Mm. 
this is the one trying to cut through the senior there. It looks like it's very tough. Come on, cut through it. Almost. A leopard lover here, yeah, no, and June does look like she's going to take off with that big belly of hers. But how many times have we seen June with that big belly? She loves eating. Oh, and she can eat a lot, and she's very successful. Uh, we hardly ever really see that female hyena with a, a small belly. It's always something inside there. Mm. The long oh, it's finally got that that sinew that's coming out there now. Sorry, Jared, you didn't get any answers on uh, this cub's age. I think, it, as I said, I think it's about close to a year. I just want to ask Jared, our director, if anybody has sent any answers on the age of the, the young one. Oh, so you did get answers. Okay. All right. So it's 11 months. Yeah. So it's almost a year. 11 months old. Hmm, it's almost a year. And really growing up so nice. Hmm. Yeah, Terry, well, definitely. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, June coming all the way with that uh, huge carcass. I mean, we saw the struggle there. Um, you can understand she is now, you know, she's out for the out for the count. I don't think she's going to move anytime soon. The belly's full. The cub has uh, been sorted with uh, with food, and uh, I think this is it for her for the day. She has checked out, clocked out. Such strong jaws, such like, like just that the, the pull force as well. It's amazing. And so you always find uh, hyenas uh, front paws. They are pretty much kind of uh, pushed to the side, not like leopards and lions when they walk and you can see their tracks. It's pretty much pointing forward. But with a hyena, it's a little bit to the side. And why is that? It's just to kind of give that leverage. When they're pulling, it's easier for that leverage. And you can see exactly what this young one is doing, kind of trying to pull that meat off the, the bone or off the skin, or trying to get the skin off the bone. Good morning, Blue Jay Fly. Yes, uh, she is. Uh, I also admire Jen, just for her ways of what she's been doing and how she does and does it. <coughs> and especially with this one. This youngster can be very happy that uh, he or she's got a fantastic mom. There comes another vehicle here, so I do apologize if you do hear a rumbling on uh, or in the background.
It's just all this busy chewing on a leg there at the moment. Oh, I've got some nice spots of the kill right there. So it's going to fill this little one nice today. Well, welcome back, everyone. And we've just been watching this hyena who stood up and started howling very loudly and it's amazing now all of a sudden i see hyenas moving i mean really really loudly so there's one that's arrived from the left there's one that's actually come in from the back as well so i wonder if that was just a, a rallying of the troops i'm not exactly sure i hope that she does it again does look like a female size wise. This little one in front looks like a male. seen a flock of pied crows just fly over us. Billy, yes, uh, I mean, it's it's not that, the, obviously we've tried to see hyenas come in here and the lions chase them off, but if a hyena gets too close and if the, the lion is quick enough and gets hold of a hyena, I'm pretty certain that they will kill him. Um, there would be no reason to, to keep them alive when something's trying to eat your food. Lions are here, they're looking up and around, but they're not too bothered at this point. Like we know they really these hyenas really have to get close for them to take any action. in some other news is that this will be our last Tuesday safari and uh, from the 1st of April which is next week Monday we will be no live drives on Mondays and Tuesdays and there will be exciting content that will replace the live shows and this was all explained in the town hall I believe the entire video of that uh, broadcast is available on YouTube if anyone wants to get some context and more explanation as to why that's being done they can head there and watch where James and Andre and um, all explain exactly why these decisions are being made but this will be our last live Tuesday safari, both in the morning and the afternoon. These lions are just watching now, interested, even the male is watching. He's just on the other side of the bush there. There's one I hear you know, quite close by, just in front of the vehicle here. And 
This is intense, everyone. I, I wish I could uh, bring you all into the situation, but we're doing our best to explain the, the atmosphere. Yes, a swift kite could be reinforcements. There's one right here next to us now. And it's amazing, after her howling, all of these hyenas regathered here. Very, very cool. Also feel like these lions are can you guys just leave us alone <laughs> we're so tired of eating all this food and i guess that's what the hyenas are going for to an extent is just the lions to eventually give up because they've been irritated to a point where they don't want to keep defending the carcass anymore there's so little left Look at her. This lioness was not looking happy there. Again, doing her scent marking thing. Look, she's weeing and she's kicking her legs back. Zach, not at all. These lines are nowhere full enough, for, even if they are completely full, bloated belly like a beach ball, they will still chase off a hyena, that's for sure. Oh, if there was a lioness looking at me like that, Hempo, would you be as brave as that hyena? <laughs> Poor shaking his head. They have moved off everyone, um, so the hyenas are now just sort of on the boundary road. There are just a few vehicles around, so that's why some of our shots of them would have uh, vehicles in, so we're just sticking to the lines for now. And sigh. It was interesting when that lioness got up and uh, sent marked here she immediately i mean that 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 uh, hyena was maybe 15 meters away from her and um, she immediately put those ears flat down and when you see that on a lion that's when they are meaning business um it's one of those clear warning signs that they are serious about um charging or feeling threatened or um, agitated quite heavily so she was not happy with how close that ahina was and i think he got the message because they all moved off now <laughs> Ah, 
<laughs> Kelvin. Um, I wish hyenas were, were that nice. The only time I think they'll do that is if it's for their own cub. Um, often hyenas will grab something and then go run off and eat it as quickly as they can. Another hyena might come and try and take it from them and that's when you get sort of them fighting with each other. Hyenas often call other others to come join them if they need the help, either to to hunt themselves or if there is a kill around like this, because they need reinforcements. They need, but if they often are alone, actually, uh, especially at night or when we see them walking around, is often just one cruising on its own, which is very common. And if they find something, they will just eat it. If it's big enough or they know that they, you know, like I say, need help, then they'll call in the rest of the clan. Thanks, Amy. All right, we left uh, June and uh, her cub. Um, the, the road is quite busy there. As I say, it is a service road, so it's just uh, yeah, just loads of vehicles coming back and forth there. Uh, I also came now. What I did, I just came into the area where uh, Chella had her cubs, just to double check because I haven't seen anything for me potential like uh, activity. That has been around there and this morning I went there and wow 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 there is uh, fresh tracks of hers going directly into those thickets again uh, there's no ways in there there's no ways that we can even get a view of anything can't even see her but the tracks are all on top of everybody's tracks and everything else uh, and it's very fresh it's from this morning so it seems like she's gone back to the den to her cubs so Good on Chella. I'm glad that she's still there. I'm still. I'm very glad she's still there. And uh, that's exactly why earlier on you saw June when she was actually dragging that kill, and when she was dragging it past Twin Dams, you could actually see she dropped it and she looked directly in that place. That's why I went back there just to see why was why was June that hyena? Why was she she looking intensely into that thickets? You know, because I know that Chella's got her cubs there or she had her cubs there. And that's why I came back just to double check and uh, yep, uh, Chella's tracks are very fresh that side, so wonderful. All right, so good on her. Yay, I'm happy for that. All right, let's, uh, sorry, what you say? Oh, 60s. Ah, oh, almost thought it was, uh, sounded like picky, sounded like Clink. I don't know, there was certainly like I was trying going through all the stuff that Jerry just told me then. No, I don't know what it was. Sorry, it was just uh, comms is not good. Ah, all right. Thanks, Jared. Okay, so we're leaving the area now. I'm um, heading towards uh, Treehouse Dam again. I'm gonna go ahead to you where Tlalama had her that kill, just in case she's still around there, because I haven't seen, uh, haven't, I haven't seen any tracks coming further south or into this area. So I'm gonna go there. Maybe she's still sniffing around there, hoping for a piece of uh, meat that was left behind by um, June. So yeah, let's go and look. I don't know what Rusty's making funny noises. Sounds like sand or something's on the in the gears.
so far, not too much has changed at the moment. Young male's gotten up. He's coming to have a sniff around. I'm not actually sure what's even left in the middle. I see a hoof. Oof. That looks like some of the hide, actually, that's attached to the leg there. You can see the, the kudu's foot there. have all sort of moved a little bit to our right between the trees so <clears throat> but out of view now There are actually some impala that I can see from here. I'd say maybe 400 meters away. Maybe 300. No, Sammy. Uh, Hyenas are capable of hunting themselves. In fact, I have seen them um, hunt and take down an impala once. Um, and yeah, that was that was one occasion. But I do know in up in East Africa, it happens a lot more uh, often with very large clans of hyenas being able to hunt and, and take down prey. So hyenas are, are, are capable hunters, but they just prefer I suppose taking the easier option to be able to scavenge off other uh, predators Deb, absolutely, those horns are absolutely stunning, really. A kudu in his prime, that is for sure. And so, actually very cool to be able to see a kudu hoof. It's something that I suppose often we never really get to look at because it is always attached to a living kudu and there you can see now when we're tracking or when you're trying to learn about different tracks a kudu is one of the ones that um, is a little bit different from the likes of let's say an impala of course size comes into play but we talk about kudu's feet looking a little bit like a foot uh, an American football or a rugby ball they rounded on the edges whereas an impala has a very straight hoof that comes to a point like a straight line a V that forms at the tip with straight edges see it's not a particular uh, favorite item of a lion there's not too much left there I think right now he's actually trying to just get the last bits of meat and the skin is attached to the leg there so that's why it's been left behind <clears throat> for the most part they wouldn't be eating that fur um, you know the hair itself is made of keratin just like the outlay of the horns as well as the hoofs and those sort of things 
so there's actually a bit of red there I can see so they're trying to separate the last bit of meat from the, the skin of the animal they might get a bit of skin here and there but they're not actively eating all the skin Mahinas are here now coming down the road. Mm, Justin, I would say five days was my maximum. Um, we had the uh, a pride called the Birmingham Pride. Um, and they were sort of a break off of that. They weren't all together. There were three young males that had taken down an entire male giraffe, fully grown, mature male giraffe. Um, and I think what had happened, we were in quite a, a hilly section, quite rocky. And uh, I think they had taken off and it had actually slipped and fallen. And that's how they were able to take it down. So three sub-adult males, so like this young male, maybe a year older than him. So a little bit bigger. <clears throat> and they were on that giraffe for five days those three and that stank I cannot tell you how much that stank oh my word I apologize for a flash that was on the screen everyone this young man looking at these hyenas they just sort of in front of us on the road that's um, coming past here I can maybe show you them they all quite spread out Still heading west. I went past Trias Dam now. Nothing at Trias Dam. No tracks. Nothing like that. So, but uh, I did get a, an update of uh, tortoise pan, a male leopard. His tracks, just not not him himself, but his tracks. It's coming from Arethusa Safari. That's a property that's just to the west of us, and coming towards uh, Juma. So uh, guess what I am going to do? Zoe's. Yes, I'm just going to look here see if any tracks haven't crossed over here. I'm just going to do his usual route. I'm just going to quickly backtrack on his usual route here. And to see if we can pick up on any fresh tracks of his coming over. So I'm just going to quickly look here. Doo -doo -doo. Got hyena, hyena tracks, hyena tracks, hyena tracks. And hyena tracks. Right, another one is here. So he came up from that side. I think we'll try, as I said, I'm going to try Zoe's. Another road that's just to the west of uh, Juma. Nothing coming out. Let's go quickly. It's nice that uh, Amy's got some great content this morning. Hyenas and lions, wonderful. Bronwyn, yeah, I feel the leopard magic. I can feel something's gonna happen. We've got to find Tortoise Pan again. Oh yes. I'm sure BK, it's so nice having BK back again as well, behind the camera, as always. So. Hoping that we, uh, BK can start his uh, stint with uh, a nice sighting of uh, tortoise pan. Oh 
maybe Shadulu and Nene. That won't be bad. A lot of buffalo coming back and forth here, but just for one buffalo. Must be that same buffalo that we keep on finding. No, not like the buffalo itself, but we keep on seeing its tracks coming in and out, in and out of Juma. But it's just one. Hmm. It's just a very corrugated, so I'm just trying to. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Good old corrugation, yeah? Nice just to drag some tires or something on this road, just to kind of flatten these corrugations, these little bumps on the road. BK, what are you well, uh, keen to see? Leopard, there we go. Millie, BK says leopard. Well, that's it, huh? Leopardo, Leopardo. I, I fully agree with BK's uh, request right there. I can take that request every day, any day, 24 hours a day. <laughs> this is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It is always nice looking for a leopard and finding them. But yeah, let's go up. Alright, so I'm on this road going Zoe's. I'm going to go up here just to see if Tortoise Pan, that male leopard, hasn't crossed in from Arethusa Safari and uh, came into, into Juma. Uh, Catherine, yeah, uh, wild dogs are on uh, Cheetah Plains and Koro uh, cut line. That's the where the so we, we don't have traversing in that area, but that's where the wild dogs are. So yep, yeah, unfortunately they're not around for us uh, here on Juma. As well as uh, I don't need to, uh, maybe Amy did tell you, but uh, they had. Uh, Marips, that male leopard last night, coming from Chitwa, and he came up Drakensberg Road and he head on to pretty much towards the northeastern corner to Biffleshook Dam. Uh, one of the guys went to try and follow up there, but uh, no luck as of yet. So he might have crossed straight into Biffleshook, and then they might have crossed straight north. I've got a feeling maybe those giraffe yesterday were looking at something like that. That's up to the cut lines on that. I feel like he might have passed us there while we were watching those giraffe this afternoon. Just got a, just got a feeling, a funny hunch about it. Yeah, it's his uh, last. Uh, Tuesday sunrise safari. Last tawny, tawny Tuesday. At least Amy had some uh, tawny cats on a tawny Tuesday. That is nice. That. I think she might still have those lions. Oh, sorry, who's happy? Oh, no, uh, see, BK, uh, BK will never disappear forever. He has taken, taken hook, line, and sinker all at once for Wild Earth. He's back again. Uh, he's back. So there's a lot of tracks here on this road. 
There's a lot of hyena trucks, but this gonna. This is where you have to try and keep our eyes open and peeled for um, Dr. Spad. And so nice, the sun, yeah? The sun is coming out, there's a blue sky. It feels like there's no, no more rain for the next uh, week or so. That's gonna be nice. Well, as it is a uh, Tawny Tuesday and it is just fitting to spend some time with uh, Tawny cats, I think let's head over to Amy as she's still sitting with those Tawny cats. Indeed it is, it is. And here we have this lioness munching away on a bit of, I suppose, Skin, but there's a bit of meat attached to the skin. You can actually hear her. It's been wonderful to be able to spend this time with this pride of lions. And Cedric will agree that it's um when you've got them in one place like this, you get to know them, their personalities a little bit more. And for me, coming in and, and not having met these lions before, it's been wonderful to get to know them, to learn more about their history and their story. And um, they're survivors. They're incredible pride. Um, and it's so cool to see them doing so well. I know so many are so happy <clears throat> to see them thriving. Male cheetah are around. Um, I actually personally have never seen a cheetah here, but I do. They do pass through. Cheetahs are cheetahs are definitely part of the, the the animals that we get within the Greater Kruger and within <clears throat> the Sabi Sand Game Reserve. Um, they just they are quite rare. They're just not that commonly seen. And usually we associate cheetah with sort of big open plains. Um, they, not to say that they don't occur in more bushy areas, but they're generally quite secretive as well. Um, quite difficult to spot because they like, you know, cats. They just, when they lie down, it's so difficult to see them. They also pass through areas a lot, you know, the, of all the cats, they, of the, the bigger cats that we can see, um, they are quite vulnerable. You know, they're not as strong. They don't have as much power as leopard and lion. So they sort of stay out of everyone's way but it is most certainly possible to see a cheetah. <laughs> What's wrong, girl? <laughs> Maybe there's something in her mouth that's not quite, the texture's not like, almost like a hair or something, you know?
So this jackal is being probably a little bit more protective than looking for an eagle for its food, which is very, very interesting. This is something I've never seen before. But looking at it closely now, it looks to be a tawny eagle by the fact that the gape on the mouth doesn't extend past the eye. But needless to say, it is an eagle that's landed on the ground. Uh, Bat-eared foxes being in the area denning choose their den sites very specifically for food resource uh, being harvested termites. So there's a good chance the tawny eagle or the eagle itself is walking around trying to snatch up some food in the form of insects and the jackal is having none of it. Snazzy, that is a very big bird, but if the bird pl doesn't play his cards right, the jackal could have it. Because uh, jackals are very, very quick, very, very fast, and they can bite quite powerfully. All right, I've got female leopard tracks going here, and then the female leopard went down Zoe's and it cut in again. I think for Shadulu. So I'm just going to go here, yeah, I'm going to do another road uh, called. Um, Monkey Orange. I just want to double check here because she came down here and she went around. So hopefully we get another leopard here in a tree with, with maybe a kill that has been hoisted, which would be fantastic. I think this side it seems like she came here and went there. I'm just trying to trying to work out uh, the situation here at the moment. I haven't seen uh, the male leopard tracks, but just uh, the female so far coming out. Yeah, still coming straight down this side. Ah. Hey, let's see. The All right. Lovely, Jared. Lovely. Thank you. So Jared said that the sun is shining today and it looks beautiful out here. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, there, Palanite, Zoe is coming here, maybe towards uh, our mast that's uh, right in front of us. I just need the, that golden kitty to be lying up in a tree now with this golden light that's coming through. It would be really a, a nice addition for this morning's sunrise safari. Yo, Annabelle, that is, that is, that is, uh, you know what, uh, that is very interesting. Um, it, you know, uh, maybe there's a little bit of respect there, in a way, where June knows, she, well, June definitely knows that uh, Chela was there, because she looked there and the tracks went exactly that spot, exactly that spot. Um, I mean, I just, I went in and investigate, and uh, so... <sighs> I don't, I don't know if June's going to say, okay, now I know that, uh, you know, a lion's got cubs and all that. I don't know about that part, it's, uh, it's, I'm not going to think for her, but um, you know, at the end of the day, Chilla will be very protective. It's amazing that, uh, I think if, if June went in there to go and investigate a little bit further into that thicket, uh, then you would have maybe got a reaction out of uh, Chilla, or well, you would have got, not maybe, you would have got a reaction out of Chilla because it's protection of her cubs, protecting her cubs, and um, she might have even given a, a June a little bit of a hiding there, but luckily that did not happen. I think June was more focused on her big belly and getting the food to her cub. So it's almost like a little bit of respect there, you know, it's like, don't worry, let me just move on. Thanks, I'll see you, but I'm going to move on.
Any love, if you close off an area, you just have to tell everybody it's closed. <clears throat> you just have to, we are all part of a, a, a guides group. All part of a guides, sorry, I'm just looking up in all these trees here at the moment. Uh, we're part of a northern guides group and then on that guides group, we just let the guys know, listen, uh, make sure that all your, your, all your guides know that uh, this area is going to be closed, it's closed off, and yeah. And then if it's on the property like it's on Juma, for instance, we just, uh, we get uh, pretty much, oh, there's a nice kudu. Uh, it's going to go, sorry, uh, uh, BK. Uh, it was a nice female kudu that just was there. No, it was not there. But yeah, if it's on the property uh, that uh, comes on, the, on your property that you reside on, um, as I said, you do like a thing called a wellness check, just to double check that you know that uh, she might still, uh, she might still be there, uh, if the cubs are still there, and just to kind of follow up. You know, it's no use if you don't follow up, and just now she's, she's moved those cubs like five, six days ago, and you're still closing that area off. Now, while well, you're closing an area off that's got no cubs, it doesn't really make sense. So. You have to still do those wellness checks. So that's what I'm. That's what I did this morning. Cause especially when I saw June looking there, and I saw, and then I saw Chilla's tracks going into that exact same spot. And then, oh, there goes another one. Bye. <laughs> it's almost like deja vu. <laughs> I'm sure I saw that uh, kudu coming past. I'm seeing it again. <laughs> No, Jared, I just said, Riley, has there been any news on uh, sunning in the area? Sunning. Uh, I did not even copy that. <laughs> Sorry. Repeat, please. Thank you. New leopards. Uh, Riley, new leopards into the area. Well, we haven't seen red hawk male yet, so we haven't seen the red hawk male uh, leopard yet, but he's up there in the north. Maybe we'll be lucky seeing him coming south into Juma, so that'll be nice to see that my young male leopard. Um, who else? Who else? Malcolm Sava's got a, a, a young female, and so Malcolm Sava's a female leopard. Um, that's just to the southwest of us, towards Shirley's, Arethusa's. Uh, Arethusa Safari, those properties here on the right, and she's got a young female uh, uh, cub. Um, I think it's about maybe eight, nine, nine months old, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, well, the little one will eventually start venturing into a Juma as well, just to come in to investigate. So that's the only ones I know of. Uh, the other ones, everybody else knows. I mean, we all we all know the, the rest of the characters. That was a hole, eh? No. Yeah. <laughs> Hello everyone. We have unfortunately had to leave those cats uh, and our hyenas just because signal was getting very patchy and uh, we didn't want to... Ugh. Just got a face full of spiderweb. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Um, 
uh, it was cutting out all the time so we spent a really good morning there with them a whole hour and a half which was wonderful so we are now actually heading back the way we came and uh, we did see Stellan we're coming up the so I'm coming to follow up see if maybe we can find them again um, otherwise I'm gonna head more into the eastern part of the see what else we can find for you all this morning but it's been wonderful oh man that hyena lion interaction is just priceless and the whole atmosphere of that sighting was incredible so we've started off uh, with a fantastic start this morning I think and the Sun's coming out that's the other news <clears throat> I know Cedric mentioned mentioned it just now but from myself it's wonderful to feel some warmth again through the sky and hopefully it just clears up more and more which is what the weather forecast says it's going to clear up more and more as the day goes on and just some tracks here oh, Aina tracks in bed that's an interesting one um, it's not very normal for that in fact it's highly unlikely for a lioness to be accepted a lioness from a different pride sorry this is the road I want to take uh, the uh, lioness from a different pride to be accepted by a new pride um, I've read uh, up on that I've also uh, watched a few sort of documentary program things on that um, especially let's say when a, a lion cub is rescued um, for example it's been abandoned and you know someone takes it in and, and rears it and tries to adjust it back to normal life and then tries to release it into the wild absolutely not accepted by another pride because I, a lion is a social cat it needs the pride for survival it's part of you know what especially for a lioness particularly uh, male lions is a different story so um, to be accepted by another pride I'm not saying that it's never happened but prides are in competition with one another it's a it's another mouth that has to f eat your food and if you're not family or part you know if, if your loyalty and allegiance doesn't lie to that pride then how you know why would you let that line into the pride it's just another one to you know use your resources as it were but that's not to say that lone lionesses haven't joined together maybe to find each other and actually start a pride of their own I don't know all these possibilities out here in the wild there's so much that we don't see so much that is undocumented and so that's a really important part is, is to know that we haven't seen or experienced everything out here that's possible to experience and there are exceptions that happen to what we call rules but thanks for the question that was a, a really good one and with this weather everybody oh man it is such good weather for predators to be moving around even a pack of wild dogs they were around yesterday morning briefly on our boundary but moved off again so waiting to hear if there's any other reports maybe we'll find them in poor who knows <laughs> predators taking in a youngster that is not a predator no um, not in the wild I know that there are some videos and things like that oh poor 
there's a bird, but Aish, I don't know if it's going to... St oh no, they flew away. <laughs> of course they did. There's a little group of um, white crested helmet stripes They're actually there on the, that bush willow. We can try, but they do tend to fly. You can't see them. Oh man, they're just up. There's one there. Oh, moving. It's just behind the tree now. Oh man. Sorry, everyone. They really. Oh, there they flew. <laughs> There's one in the background. It's a white crested helmet shrike. They've got sort of a yellow eye and these bright orange legs, but they've moved off now. Thanks for trying, for I appreciate it. Um, anyway, I know that there are sometimes videos of like lions or even a leopard like playing with a baby in parlor or seems to be looking after it, but later on, um, you know, it's, it's sort of this playful nature that a cat has. And in the end, they do end up killing that animal and, and eating on it. Archer in the wild, you know, it's predator and prey. You're not going to find a, an impala hanging with a pride of lions that they've adopted. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Oh, elephant. I was hoping they had come this way. I think these are the ones that we saw early this morning a little bit further south. There we go. There's another one a bit closer, but um, it's just behind a bush at the moment. There's one kind of going to come out here and pull just in front of us. Good morning. Andrew, before I answer your question, I'm just going to reposition the vehicle because this elephant is going to come out and there's a bush we right on a corner and then I'll get to your question. Otherwise, it's going to come out and we're not going to see it. <laughs> I think it's going to give us some attitude as well as it comes out.
All right, I think this is a good spot. There's some more Ellie's that are just going to come out on the left as well. Um, Andrew, I think to answer your question, um, elephant bulls, by the time they get too old and sick, they already are out of the herd. There's a little one that's going to come with mum. <laughs> um, so, so in terms of joining back to the herd, they, they wouldn't, no. And um, they would move off uh, already when they are quite young, in their teenage years. And um, so once they, once they are mature, they are now bachelors. So if they are old and sick, they will tend to isolate themselves and just because they can't really keep up with any other bulls, more healthy bulls, and then um, tend to, to, to find a quiet place and, and just sort of collapse and, and die. Um, so no, there would be no rejoining of the herd because they are no longer part of the herd. All right, I'm gonna move forward again and pour. Just gonna try and keep up with these elephants. Not exactly sure how many there are. I could only see those three at the moment. <laughs> now it's a tusk and tawny Tuesday, absolutely. It's going to see... Oh, no, he's moving off. There is a little pan around here, if I'm not mistaken. So let's go see if they're going to find something to drink. Ah! I think that's exactly what they're doing, and Paul. Yay! Oh, there's the rest of the herd. How beautiful is this, everyone? Let's just take a moment and enjoy these elephants drinking here at the waterhole.
are enjoying a magical scene here this morning at this waterhole. Finally, absolutely, elephant therapy is just wonderful. I think they have finished their drink now, everyone are going to move across this open plain. You can clearly see the matriarch there, the biggest elephant of this small herd. And this is a typical sized family group as well. was just perfect and now they are going to head off into the bushes and uh, carry on feeding and enjoying the morning and how lucky were we to time that so that we got to be here for their morning drink that was just perfect going to pull forward slightly so you can see them all moving off into the bushes. Alright, well as we watch these Ellie's disappear off into the bush, you can head over to Cedric and see what he's been up to. Nice, Amy, and uh, oh, I saw a few things. We had kudu and all that, but everything has moved off, so a little bit tough now. Now everything has just gone into the thicker ore. Sorry, let's just quickly do this. Is nice. Uh, let's go that side. We'll get the light behind. So we're back here with Lalamba at the kill from yesterday afternoon or yesterday, and I'm going to see if I can just pop the vehicle in here and get a nice sighting of these bataliers. So they are, they've been attracted by that's probably this, the smell and the sight of a carcass that was around here this morning. So exactly where we found June the first time with that carcass here. So I think they are just hoping that there might be some scraps lying around. And we're going to do the ND filter. You can see like that little thing that comes across there. So, yeah, it's uh, also funny enough when we got here, uh, BK and myself, we saw a white headed vulture. But it is so skittish that uh, we tried to stop quite, a f quite far away from it, but uh, it just took off, which is very sad because a white headed vulture, very much an uncommon vulture species that we do get this side. I was hoping maybe it'll come back. But the nice battalier is sitting up here and waiting maybe to come down to have some food. 
There's still little pieces lying around from that kill. These birds are scavengers. Just like the vultures. Oh, scavenge on carcasses. Monica, and, uh, we always see birds. Birds will always be around if it's a cold day. Only thing I think when it's rainy, you know, when it's uh, wet and rainy and all that, you'll find that birds tend to rather take cover, you know, in the canopies and all that. You know, they don't want to get their feathers and all that completely soaked. So, but then you'll find like uh, the bigger birds of prey, like this batalia now. And then I'm going to kind of, oh, it's going to, going to do a poo, no, it's moving down. Maybe it wants to come down for a, for something. But you'll see the bachelor, or all the birds of prey, they'll rather still sit up in these dead trees and uh, just kind of fluff their feathers out and stay warm that way. We also got male leopard tracks right here. That tree house dam. Oh, wow. Did you see that? That was a bit of a interesting one. The one just chased the other one off. That's not nice. Hmm. And there's that male leopard tracks coming into this area. Yeah, I'm still going to be scratching around here for a while. Such a beautiful bird that we do get to see in the Greater Kruger Park. All right, so from the 20, <coughs> as you know, Easter's coming up. So from the 29th of March until the 1st of April, uh, get ready for an epic Easter. Come along for a clue-driven treasure hunt. That's going to be quite nice. Inserts of hares, nesting, hares, nesting and, uh, and animals who are good at finding uh, things. So like an art fork, an art fork. That is an epic Easter hunt. 29th of March until the 1st of April. Josh, it is beautiful. They are stunning, stunning. That orange legs, orange beak, that beautiful brownish color. I love that brown color on the shoulders. <clears throat> so there is like a pale morph to that. So where that brown is, that chocolate brown, there's one that, uh, well, I haven't seen one before, but there's a pale morph where it's got like a pale color on top there instead of that brown color. I always try and look out for that, but uh, our bataliers, uh, the, the pair, or actually all three adult bataliers that hangs around here on Juma, I don't have any of that uh, pale morphed coloration on top of its shoulders. when the wind actually catches their feathers there like behind their head and just lifts it up it almost gives them like a beautiful crown a 
and twing. <laughs> I think this, this battery maybe wants to come down. All right, uh, Beaks, let's uh, move off. I think we're going to just try and head into that direction, head towards Chilapan. We'll follow up on other stuff here for now. Catherine, you say it's your favorite raptor there. Yeah, they are beautiful. I love. Bataliers are beautiful. Uh, it's like such an iconic bird as well for the Greater Kruger Park. And um, I mean, I know there's some, uh, like, kind of, can I say, estates in some of the towns or cities around here. Yeah. It's called like Batalier State. Oh, where am I going? Wrong, uh, wrong plan there. My plan was actually there. Let's go this way. And all of a sudden there's a little bit of drizzle coming again. This weather is funny. I thought it was like clearing up, the sun was coming through, and all of a sudden it's uh, gone grey and drizzly. Hello, hello everybody. We were driving down after leaving those ellies and I spotted a monkey in a tree and on closer inspection there's not just one monkey in this tree. There's actually about five or six at least uh, moving about but uh, they're very well camouflaged because they too are grey and white just like the dead branches of this tree. It looks an old lead wood and a uh, great point for a monkey to be sitting in the morning pretty much as high as he can go in this tree and gets a really good look at the surrounding area good vantage point and this troop of monkeys would have slept in maybe one of the jackalberries or something like that close by with green leaves on and now that it's warming up this morning Although Cedric does say he's got a shower of rain. <laughs> We're quite warm and dry up here in the north of Juba. Um, uh, they are coming out and saying good morning. Hello. There's two sort of on the, on the bottom left-hand side that are grooming. There's another one grooming itself. Uh, just below the one that's higher up there, you can just see its little face. It's quite white, like a white spot. Uh, and then there's two on the far left-hand side that are grooming there. Um, unfortunately, we are far away, so we're not going to be able to get any closer for you all. Uh, but it is a, it's a distant view, but a very clear view of these monkeys here. And these are vervet monkeys. 
Rollo, it's a good question. Um, I, I don't think so. I haven't, I've actually seen a, a leopard in a tree with a carcass um, and about maybe 150, 200 meters away um, there were monkeys that saw it and an alarm called and they were there in the other tree. Um, it's not an immediate threat to them. Um, I think they obviously pick up that that there's you know the smell of death in the air, so rotting meat and whatever. But um, you know, would they purposefully stick around? Possibly not, because there's a predator in the area. They also know that predators got to kill, so you know they they do alarm call when they see that. I've seen that happen before. But in all, you know, likelihood, they may generally move away. You know, it's not something they necessarily want to be close to. But there's no real sort of um, immediate threat um, if there's a predator with a carcass. But I think just because they are also classified, I suppose, as um, prey species that you generally want to avoid a predator something like a leopard or a lion so why why hang around for too long and they may generally move in a different direction now during the town hall a few days ago um, it was explained the current situation with the news that multi-choice has not agreed to pay wild earth for being on dstv and sharing african stories with the world and the viewer uh, has decided to start a petition to appeal to multi-choice in order to change their minds and we of course fully support this initiative we'd like to ask you at home to please help spread the word about this petition as well as our donation drive throughout your network and community and your support will be of great value in making it possible to continue sharing Africa's wildlife with the world. We need 10,000 signatures uh, on the petition and 130,000 US dollars um, for donations. And you can head over to wildearth.tv forward slash donate. And for the petition, we have posted the link to it on our socials. We are halfway there on our signatures, so we need to keep pushing to get there. Um, and please make sure that you do not donate to change.org. The one on top has just been looking around. The bottom left too have been grooming each other. There's two of them there. The one's actually standing up with its butt in the other one's face and then checking for ticks there around the tail. <laughs> um, and Lillian, you want to know if we have different colors of vervet monkeys? And no. Uh, they all look exactly like this with the gray white and black face when they are babies they are completely black in color but then they do change um, and get into the adult coloration thanks important now we can see those two there i think that's as close as we're going to get everyone but you can see that they are having a grooming session, which is very much part of this troop's life, just like baboons. They're all about aloe grooming, strengthening the social bonds, but also keeping each other clean.
Right, well, we've got a Birchall starting up here in the tree. It's busy calling away. It looks a little bit wet around the neck area. And all the leaves and that is still quite wet. We had a little bit of rain this morning. No apologies. We just really see a silhouette at the moment because the light is not that great. Oh, I regurgitated a seed there. Mm, yeah, see that little seed that came rolling out of its beak. Always nice to listen to the early morning choruses. coming up in this area so no luck on any of those uh, rosettes this morning on the southern side towards Charles Dam so I've come this side to see um, to see if we can follow up maybe on Marips maybe go to Biffleshook Dam go take a look around there um, let's see, see what else we can find for the morning and let's go let's see what we can get well the morning started off very nice with a lot of hyena action which is very nice. And, uh, Alec, uh, where do I know where to go when? In the grass when it's when I when I'm tracking. Now uh, that that's when it becomes a little bit tricky, Alec. Um, I think what happens there is that. Uh, you try and see where the grass has been flattened, especially after rain. If you if it's if you had rain and all that, so I'm going to give you a quick example. Yeah. So so no, you can see no animal has walked through this. So all your grass, uh, the seeds, the uh, the stems, the grass itself, the little blades, they're all wet with uh, dew drops and all that. So. So if an animal's coming on the road here, la 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 la, and it's going to go through the grass and it's going to walk to another spot, okay, so the animal's going to go here, big animal walking, 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 and ends up. So if I have to take a look, can you really see, you see it in a way? Uh, uh, can you see where I walked there? No. Oh, you can't see. All right, we'll have to go a little bit forward. All right, maybe I must walk here. Yeah, walk. Let's uh, walk here. So if I walk here now and going through the grass, so animals walking, feeding, feeding, walking, feeding here, feeding on the grass, walking, walking, feeding. All right, that's it. I'm walking, eating, eating, eating. All right, let me carry on. Now you can see where I walked. Hey, right. BK, can you see? He can, you know why? Yeah, you can see where the grass is flattened. And now as well you can see which direction because now the grass is all flattened down that way so if it's like elephants or rhino or buffalo you always see if you don't have tracks there you can see where they actually walked into that direction instead of being coming this way and flattening that way it's gone that side all right so yeah that's how you can actually kind of work out i don't think really the camera does it justice yeah but with the naked eye, you can see. <coughs> Alrighty. And now I'm full of ticks. Hello. <laughs> Alright, let's go. And on we shall go. So yeah, it takes a bit of time to, you know, work those things out. That's why we call it tracks and signs. So tracks and signs of animals. So you don't just look for the tracks itself or the spurs, you look pretty much at the bigger picture and see pathways. I smell wild dogs. You also smell wild dogs. And wild dog has got a very kind of a, 
unique, like pungent smell to them. And I just smell wild dogs. Hmm. Imagine we bump into some wild dogs here now. Benji, yeah, it seems so, it seems simple, Benji, but uh, Benji, it's not, you know, because you've got to keep your eyes pretty much peeled on all all aspects, on the road, the grass, the trees, under the bushes, you know, there's so many things that you have to look out for. That's why, I, that's what I love about it, because it's being, you know, just being that vigilant, uh, so much more in a way, and uh, your senses is just heightened. When you're in the bush, the sense of hearing, sense of smell, sense of sight, yeah. even touch, it is, everything is just heightened. That's what we find when we go back to, like, go on leave and go home and go to the cities and all that. All of a sudden, it's, everything seems bright and loud because you're not used to it because you're everything so accustomed to what we, what we have here and what we pretty much are accustomed to. So. Hey Beeks. Yeah, Beekos was also saying this morning. It's nice just to nice to kind of get back into the bush again and away from the noise. Alright, well we're gonna head slowly to Buffalo's uh, Dam. Let's head over to Amy. have found ourselves a giraffe everybody I'm so happy I've been we saw a giraffe briefly I think about two days ago um, it wasn't even on Juma it was on another property and it was moving away from us very quickly and we have found this this male giraffe having a bit of a of a chew here and he hasn't moved an inch I'm so happy that we've got him in this gap to be able to show you quite nice. He's looking directly at us as well. He's so well camouflaged. Uh, we were driving along the road here and I tell him, Paul, the only reason I saw that there was something there was because, because I saw this big black swoosh of hair and I thought, oh, what's climbing up the tree? And it turned out to be the giraffe's tail. That was swishing. And now we've got this perfect gap to watch him watch us. He may be coming towards the water. I'm not sure. We are here at a water hole. Um, um, I don't know. Maybe he's feeding. Maybe he's drunk already. Maybe, yeah. When it comes to, to, to coming for water, giraffes are so cautious. <clears throat> we often see them um, on the waterhole show. That's also on the Wild Earth Channel. Uh, coming down to water and they're just so cautious. He's now just put his head behind those uh, leaves. So I apologize for that, everyone. But ho he might move again. Otherwise, if not, we'll just reverse slightly. And we should be able to get a clearer, a clearer view of him for you all. And right now he's ruminating, so he's not feeding. He's actually rechewing his food. Erica, um, you want to know why giraffes don't stay in herds for safety? Um, sort of younger giraffes, also females, they tend to associate with one another um, quite regularly, but we call them temporary associations. So it's not like a, a fixed herd um, of females and their young that are always together like elephants. When you look at a, a, a big male giraffe like this, although yes, they, they are definitely, there is safety in numbers, he is very, very big and very difficult for predators to hunt um, although it's a hundred percent possible for predators to take down a fully grown male giraffe and um, 
it's not a common thing that we see very often. So in terms for safety for this giraffe is, he, you know, he doesn't feel unsafe on his own. Let me put it that way. Will he associate with other giraffes? Absolutely. In fact, there could be other giraffes around here at the moment that we can't see. Very often that is the case uh, because they camouflage so well. It's quite a thick area here and often they are able to see each other or be aware of each other without us knowing because of the height advantage that they have. So their hearing and smell is much more acute than ours. Um, but yes, I think that that um, pretty much covers why they won't always be in herds. Oh, and so you are 11 years old and you say it's amazing that they don't get stuck in the trees and so you're so right I think if I was that tall I'd be so clumsy and I'd also get my head stuck not in the clouds but in the trees <laughs> but giraffes are very good at being so tall and uh, they're able to deal with that and not have to get stuck in the trees. They also have a very um, sort of slim lined head, Enzo, which means that they can sort of stick their heads into the trees and feed without worrying about getting stuck. So it's sort of very pointy at the front and very narrow all the way, their whole head. They can duck as well, they can put their heads down, so it's not like they can't bend their neck at all, so that allows them to sort of move their head out the way or their neck out the way if they need to. I love giraffes. I feel they are such peaceful animals. Gail, yes I have. Um, they don't have what we refer to as sort of like a call that we associate with an animal like zebras have their sound, elephants have their sounds, hyenas have their sounds. I've heard a giraffe almost cough, like clear their throat, and I've heard them sneeze. Those are the two the two sounds that I've heard a giraffe make, but for the most part they are silent. Oh, oh now he started to feed again. I think I'm going to just move forward a little bit, see if we can get another gap now that this, uh, he does seem quite relaxed everyone, so I'm just going to try and reposition for you all. So important to just move slowly, um, sudden movements and animals don't go well together. Slow movements show that you aren't um, a threat to them. So we just want to move slowly towards this giraffe and hopefully we'll get a really nice gap for you all. See more of his body. 
There's a water thickney calling. It does seem quite relaxed. So I'm hoping that maybe if we go even more forward, we'll be able to get a really nice view of him. There might be a good gap coming up now, Paul. Ah. Is that little branch in the way? Okay. There we go. How about that everybody and I think what helped us in that situation is that when I first saw the giraffe I stopped I let him get used to our presence we had a nice view just through the gap and then once I'd given it about three or four minutes then I decided to move a little bit closer and we approached slowly we didn't make any sudden movements we weren't too loud and he hasn't bothered about us at all which is wonderful Indeed, Jared, it's the, the water thickness calling here and it can be quite haunting. I love watching giraffes feed, the way they use their tongue and lips to rip off leaves from the stalk. You can actually see they usually don't take the stalk with them. It's just the leaf that they pull off. That was a good one. Let me just um, pull forward slightly here and pull. There we go. Okay, so we made our way to the northeastern corner of Juma, to a beautiful dam known as a Biffelzook Dam. And uh, not much happening here. We've got at least a, a, a grey heron once again balancing on that piece of wood that's coming out of the water. But you can see it's almost like a hunting stance. It's looking straight into the water, hoping that there might be a fish that's going to swim right past there. Get some breakfast for the morning. So you can see, watch it I'm looking very carefully. A nice little position there. And when they do strike, it's quick. It's very quick. And they're going for things like tilapia. Oh, what? Oh, hey. oh must. Just must. See how quick it was with that long beak. Perfect weapon. Keeping a close eye on that. Those are just sitting here now and uh, reminiscing about uh, a sighting that we had here 
I was last here with BK, because so BK is now at the back here with, with me this uh, morning. And uh, I thought it's nice having him back this side. And I remembered last year we were, we were very fortunate sitting here watching a herd of buffaloes coming down exactly that uh, sandy uh, patch that you see on the right hand side. A herd of buffaloes came down here for a drink uh, late afternoon. And uh, Jared was also the so Jared, Jared was also the director that day. So and um, we had the Nkuhuma Pride with Mohawk, the male lion, chasing the buffaloes and then they caught the buffalo, a female buffalo there at the end float. There's at the back end. Oh it got a fish. Yes, it's got a fish. Well done. A little fish. Well, something. It's like a little snack. Well done on that. That was quick. And yeah, and those lions brought that buffalo down there in the inflow. It was quite the sighting we had, yeah. Hey, Beeks? Yeah, I remember. Oh, remember that? That was, uh, that was hectic. When was that? Oh, that was like last year sometime. Yeah, September. Last year, September. Exactly, Jared. Jared. We were also very impressed with, very impressed with Nkuma Pride. They really took down that buffalo very quickly. It was in November. Was it November? Yeah, it was in November. Uh, November last year. Yeah, it felt almost like a year ago. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that was not too long. Though. I'm hoping that uh, we can pick up on a sighting like that again. Yeah, Nicole, that is that is brilliant balancing skills. If I <laughs> if I had to stand on that log, there is no ways, and it's still hunting as well. Yeah, it is it's amazing with those long thin legs and just uh, not even wobbling from side to side, keeping like you know keeping balance in that. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Well, that is quite something. I would love to do that. Why not? Look at that perfect hunting stance there. Cocking its head back. There is, Josh, there is a crocodile here. We've saw it, but we can't see it now. It's actually, it's at the other inflow now. I can't, I just got my binox. I can barely see the eyes, but we did see the crocodile here this morning, Josh. So that big crocodile is still lurking in this, in this dam. So this bird needs to, but I'm sure the bird's safe. I was actually taking a look at uh, one of those uh, clips on the wild earth with a cheetah that went down to the water and uh, the crocodile grabbing the cheetah and pulling it in. I think, where was that? It was Pinda, eh? Pinda, yeah. Wow. What a, what a sighting. That is sad. I actually, I, I, I struggle to look at that, uh, at that sighting because it's, yeah, uh, I feel for that cheetah. Hmm. No worries, Gwyn. Okay, so say so, uh, sorry, Gwyn. So this, Gwyn says, so one of our directors that's now sitting there with Jared in uh, in Johannesburg at the moment, and she said uh, that was a tough one for her because that was one of her first uh, gigs that she had with Wild Earth, and uh, she had to pretty much sit through that sighting. Now I can imagine. I can just imagine. I I, I can imagine, like for instance, like, like maybe Tlalamba coming down here for a drink. And all of a sudden, this crocodile pulls uh, Tlalamba in. I, I would, <laughs> I would lose my, I would lose my mind. I would have to go for therapy, <laughs> trauma therapy. Yeah, uh, no, mm -mm. it's a tough one to sit through. I <laughs> know, yeah, Jared. I'll go and tackle that crocodile. Yeah, I oh don't know. Mm -mm. 
Well, I think from uh, this dam, I feel that I need to just go a little bit further up uh, a road here to the north eastern corner called Hippo Pools because I'm still trying to see if I can pick up on any tracks of uh, Marips that was coming up north towards Buffalzook Dam area. And uh, let's see if we might get uh, lucky uh, somewhere. And hopefully he might be lying up in a tree. I'm just not. I'm just hoping that he has not crossed north into into Bifelzok. All right. Well, we are going to see if we can get uh, any any lucky signs of uh, Marips in this area. Uh, let's head over to Amy as uh, she's still sitting with that beautiful giraffe. Gee, wow, that would be amazing. We are still here with Jerry the giraffe. <laughs> I just decided to call him that now. He doesn't actually have a name. Um, and feeding away, and we can see how many leaves he's actually taken off of this Tamburti tree. I mean, there's so many stalks there without leaves. You can see it really nicely. Um, how many leaves he's taken off there. Just like empty stalks all over the show. And you see how he strips is the right word. He takes his lips and his tongue and he wraps his tongue around the stalk and then pulls down. Um, and that's how he gets the leaves off without taking in the stalks. Because that's not what he's after. It's a lot harder to break down the stalks than it is to break down the leaves. The leaves are nice and soft and that's what the giraffe's after. Wendy, no, I haven't seen the dams overflowing, um, not here uh, on this property anyway. Oh, he's just got a visitor land on him by his neck. Uh, there's an ox picker there that's just arrived. I'm sure it's possible. I mean, there would be have to be a lot of water that uh, comes down, but absolutely possible, especially if there is inflow drainage lines and you know the water just gets so high um, but I personally haven't seen it myself You can see that beautiful tail now that I was talking about. That's how I first saw this giraffe. Exactly doing that. That sort of swishing around. Like a long ponytail of hair. Right, some fantastic news um, just to let everyone know with regards to donations that we are over halfway and have already raised $75,000 which is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much to um, the amazing support that we have from our viewers and fans. Um, if you'd like to get involved and help support us to keep the show running, uh, the channel running actually, uh, please donate on wildearth.tv slash donate and help us with our mission. It's very important that you do not give money to change.org.
Hmm. Melo, that's a good question. You want to know if are there are any other bird species that oxpeckers could be related to? I'm going to have to check that for you, Melo, but I sort of from what I understand is of course oxpeckers feed on ticks um, and they're looking for the blood that's inside the tick sometimes they even peck on open wounds to get that blood intake now if I think about that and sort of um, birds of prey or raptors or animals that feed on carcasses carrion that sort of thing um, that also eat blood um, that's sort of a connection that I could make in terms of other small little birds that eat meat or or blood or anything like that i actually can't think of any on the top of my head but that's a very interesting point i'm going to make a note of that uh, mellow and then maybe we can chat more about it this afternoon but also if there's anyone any of the viewers who know a little bit more about that who'd like to send through um, some info that would be very interesting to actually know if there's any other birds for me and oxpeck is so unique in what it does there are other birds that i've seen sit on on um animals like even sometimes starlings and things like that so um starlings i mean i've seen a picture of a of a um carmine bee eater riding the back of a cory bastard busted sorry which is quite funny but they're looking for the insects that fly up when the bird moves um but there are plenty of other birds that are insect eaters now whether you know that's a relation possibly because um in that way they are you know they 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 insectivorous they're not completely um just eating seeds and fruits and things like that so i think in that way maybe um as i'm chatting about it we could see oxpeckers being more closely related to insectivorous birds even maybe something like starlings for example if you look at the diet relation if we're purely looking at that All right, everyone, I actually was able to to get my birding app um, out, which is basically agreeing with what um, I was speaking about now with starlings. So they are, in fact, part of the starling family. And that makes sense because I actually remembered that I have seen starlings sometimes sitting on animals like an oxpeck and not doing the exact same action, but they are... Um, related to starling so there we go Donna, hello. Um, you are asking about a sort of a courtship dance that giraffes do. Um, I don't know about a dance. I don't think they have a have a have a dance like quite as elaborate as let's say ostriches. Oh, a whole bunch of oxpeckers have now arrived. Um, but the male will stick very close to the female. He'll often sniff her backside. He'll almost stand touching her the entire time. He uh, taps the female's hind leg often, lifts up his leg and touches it and rests his chin on her back. That is 
one of the the things that I've seen very often. He'll rest his chin on her back and then try and mount her. And it can be for hours he'll follow her around. So that's sort of their display in a way. He'll sort of literally attach to her at the hip. And um, it can be many, many hours that he does that for until she lets him uh, mount her and mate with her. Something is walking up there. Oh. Well, there's something up on the road there. You see the uh, beacon? We are on the northern boundary of uh, Juma at the moment. And it might be in Parla. I've got a feeling it might be in Parla, but it's far. It's like one individual animal that's walking up this side. So let's see, let's see, let's see what we get. I think it might be, it might be in Parla's. I don't see any tracks here of anything else. Uh, it's Impala tracks. Uh, I think it's Impala's. Yeah. It's Impala's. That's nice. It's nice to see them. Let's see if we can find them here. Yeah? Oh, there, it's not. It's a, it's a Steinbock. It's a Steinbock. A male Steinbock. And that's what we saw from far off. Hello. Look at that beautiful straight horns. Isn't it stunning? A male Steinbock. One of the smallest antelopes that we do have around here. Quite nice, quite a nice setting this. It's walking along the road. He doesn't know which way he wants to go, like right or left. And you can see there's a nice no tail at the end like the other antelopes. So you've got nothing. Oh, it's seeing something. Or heard something. No. It is going on. Seeing again. They're very skittish. That's why we always hang back a little bit. If you go too close to them, they run off. Well, I can imagine being that small and you've got all the predators around you. You're not going to be that relaxed. <laughs> back and forth. And there it goes. All right. Well, let's uh, go a little bit further on. We've got to go. We've got to go that way anyway. So. I'm struggling with my comms. Uh. I'm struggling. It's soft, so soft. Mm. And it's, my thing is on full blast. My volume. Ah. Tess, uh, yeah, this, uh, this, these are the ones that's paid for life. So it's the the Steinbock. Uh, the Steinbock and uh, your Dakers. Oh, now there's a car coming. All right, that is not a good time. Yeah, bad timing, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, just well, uh, clearly that uh, Steinbock is going to be gone. All right, let's just get off the service road. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs> But apparently they say that uh, Stenbock, uh, if, if the one gets killed by like a predator or dies of natural causes somehow, um, the other one will never get another partner. So it's like partners for life, once, once off, once off. And we haven't really seen out the Stenbock there back on the big clearing south of our camp after Tlalamba had that uh, had that steenbok a few months uh, i think it was about a month or two months ago uh, when she killed that steenbok on the big clearing and uh and since then i haven't seen those steenboks that side so really the one is dead and the other one has uh has left the area all 
All right, let's go down Aubrey's. Something's sounding funny here with uh, Rusty. Very, very funny. Like, like, a, like a metal, it's like a piece of metal is loose. Ding a ding a ding a ding. Nathan, uh, yeah, it'll be nice. Yeah, we can just see my ribs. It's, we're just missing him every single time. We're missing that male leopard. Uh, that's all right. The moment will come. At least we still know that he's moving back and forth. You know, at least he's still coming through this area. That's also a good thing. Very important. Very important. Moving towards Buffelzook Dam. I'm sure into Buffelzook again. I think he's going north. But if he might get some pressure, if the Red Hawk male leopard is in uh, Buffelzook area. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see exactly is it going to be the Red Hawk, the Hawk male leopard or is it going to be Marips that uh, is going to claim the northern areas here? That's, I guess, uh, we should. We shall know very soon, and they're both at that age where they want to hold a territory. But it's still funny that Marebs is still just coming so far down towards Chitwa, you know, coming south into his dad's territory. Very strange. Clearly he hasn't had enough of his, uh, you know, his, um, of his birthplace, so... Also, Markham Sava. Just so, so thanks, uh, Giraffe Girl. You say Markham Sava, uh, daughter, the female leopard. Uh, she's over a year old. Thank you so much for that info. Nice to know. If her daughter's over a year old, so slowly but surely she's also going to start venturing away from mom, start maybe hopefully making her way to the side, can imagine that. John, I'm not too sure if the red hawk male is older. Ah, I think they could be close to the same age, or might, maybe the red hawk male might be uh, a half a year older. I'm not too sure. John, I've got to double check on that. I am not too sure. But they're very close. I think the age is very close. Very similar. No, that's one leopard I haven't seen yet, is the red orc male. Very easy to identify him if uh, we do see him. He's, uh, he's got very orange eyes. Very orange eyes. It almost reminds me of a male leopard that used to hang around here called Lamula. And Lamula means orange. And uh, he got that name because of his eyes as well. Very orange eyes. Not that yellowish eyes, but orange.
see no tracks down here. Nothing. Slowly ambling back to our camp area. I'm just going to look here on Voyatilla Axis, the main axis road to our, towards our camp. Let's see if uh, any tracks have crossed over, crossed over from the south to the north for that male leopard. Maggie, I think the closest uh, leopard I've seen with uh, blue eyes is a male leopard known as Mvula. And that's why he got the name, Mvula. Uh, a good a friend of mine uh, uh, gave him that name, Ryan Johnson. He gave that name to them because he's got beautiful light eyes, color of rain. Mvula. I oh, know rain hasn't really got a color, but like, you know, water, like just blue, it's beautiful, yeah. He was a stunning male. Hello everyone, we have found ourselves a little baby squirrel, a little young squirrel, um, here on this Marula tree. And it's been giving us the run around and it just disappeared about five seconds before we went live, it popped back out again. So I'm very grateful for that. And you can see there's a bit of a cavity just below where that squirrel is. And I think that's where this little guy was sleeping. Oh, and now he's doing some cleaning. And the sun's coming out little bit by little, but it's warming up. I haven't quite taken off my jersey yet, but I think soon enough I will. And I think that's why we're seeing this little squirrel come out now, just to warm up. <clears throat> With the warmth coming through in the day now. There we go, it's on the trunk of the tree. stretch and oh wow <laughs> I just jumped onto the bush that was so cool and it's hopping and it's hopping and it's going through the grass Oh, Agatha, me too. I also love squirrels. They are so cute. <clears throat> Just to also mention that the mesh you saw that the squirrel was on there is um, sort of a, a project that's done to try and protect marula trees from elephants ring barking them. And it's found that this mesh can be a deterrent from um, elephants you know um, damaging these these marula trees that are protected and that's why it's there just just so you know it doesn't affect other animals in any way we saw um, yesterday actually lumber was on a tree also a marula tree with mesh on and the squirrel was there now as well all right well I think we are gonna continue on here see what else we can find in the last few minutes of the show but what a wonderful morning it has been everyone 
Oh, Theo, you read my mind. <laughs> We're both saying the same thing. It has been a lovely morning indeed. Oh, there's some dwarf mongoose here on this termite mound. I'm poor, but it's just... Oh, there we go. It comes up. All the little creatures are now... <clears throat> excuse me, coming out with the warmth of the sun coming through. And dwarf mongoose, just like those squirrels we saw, are very, very similar. In that they only really want to come out once they can feel the warmth. And this is where they would have slept last night. In this termite mound. <laughs> Two of them having a bit of a grooming session. Now remember everyone, we are back live this afternoon for our last Tuesday sunset safari. <laughs> Michelle, yes, all the cuties are coming out to say goodbye. And uh, on safari will be with me this afternoon at 3 p.m. And then we'll go into the uh, live sunset drive at 3.30. So please make sure that you do keep it tuned to Wild Earth and uh, join us all this afternoon as well. To everyone who sent through comments and questions this morning, thank you all so, so much. We really, really do appreciate it. It uh, makes the show just what it is. And I love to hear from you all and chat and discuss stuff and uh, learn from each other as well. Now, uh, we are finishing off the drive here, but we do wish you all a lovely day ahead and keep well and uh, keep it tuned to Wild Earth. We'll see you all a little bit later.